Okay, we're on. Good evening, colleagues. The workshop agenda or the workshop for tonight's meeting from October 3rd to order. Can we have the attendance? Mrs. Durgan? Here. Mrs. Giftos? Here. Mrs. Glidden? Here. Mr. Gill? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Layton? Here. Mrs. Scyther? Here. Ms. Caldwell? Here. Mr. Bennett? Here. Excellent. If you could join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight, um, we're going to talk about the goals that the board had established for the 1920 school year. Um, what we need to work through tonight is while we have created the objectives and what our goals are, we need to determine how we're going to reach those. Um, and following the SMART methodology, the goals, making sure that we are looking at specific items and how we're going to achieve it, the items that we're looking at, is it measurable and how will we measure, measure this? Is it attainable, relevant, and timely? Um, so we would want to put together two or three metrics on how we could prove. Did we promote and grow district-wide culture of trust, transparency, and collaboration? What does it look like? How do we know that it's happened? What are the points that we can qualify to say that, yes, we have met this goal? So the conversation really is going to be a little more unstructured. Um, I really think that we've all done much better as we collaborate and just openly talk. Um, Christine Max, I would hope that you guys will also pop in comments, as you see. Um, but really just working through this and coming up with how we would consider these to be met goals. <clears throat> so, our first, <laughs> the first objective being to promote and grow a district-wide culture of trust, transparency, and collaboration. The first goal, attaining high visibility engagement with schools to identify, assess, and address areas of strength and improvement. Um, just to sort of kick it off, I would see this really as being something that we'd look for you, Sandy, um, to make a mark within the schools. That you're in the different buildings, you're getting to know our staff, you're working through and seeing that these are areas that could be improved and how would we go about improving those in order to improve that culture. Yeah, I mean, Sandy's really the conduit between the schools and the board. Mm -hmm. And so I am really looking for us to establish some processes that are really allow us a window into the schools through the work that Sandy does within the district. I think one of the most powerful things that we did last year was have that workshop on, on decision making, mm -hmm. staff and faculty decision making. And I would love if every quarter we could do something in a workshop setting where we invite staff around a topic to inform the board about what's going on. Um, so, I, I mean, I think Sandy's role in this is integral in terms of keeping us informed and not in the dark about all the great stuff going on in the district and all of the, maybe the tricky things that maybe we need to improve upon. Um, but I also think that the board mechanism would be a really great way for us to to see what's going on in schools and to collaborate with school staff in the workshop setting. I like that idea. I do too. I think too that that um, like if Sandy's being highly visible and getting to know staff that hopefully he'll have some really good ideas for what those workshops can entail mm -hmm. and then who can be invited to them. Okay. It's always good to <clears throat> get into the schools and get the vibe and talk to staff if you can. I know they're teaching, but it's, you quickly can always bump into somebody that will give you their two cents and, and how things are going. And, uh, not that I'm sneaking around and trying to <laughs> get the bad stuff, but it's really, I think it sets a tone when administrators can get out of that office or out of the building, get into the classrooms or get into the hallways and go to sports and stuff like that. So. That's the fun piece of my job. I think the balance for any administrator, <clears throat> how you do that with all the other stuff that's going on, um, that's important as well. But that connection with people, I think, is probably the most important thing. Mm -hmm. 
that I can do. Just to add to that, um, just focusing on the improvement part, I think uh, one of the things we've learned just going through the budget process is I don't think we do a great job of highlighting, or I think, let me say this, I think we could improve how we talk about our successes and how we look at, you know, their, um, how we become maybe areas where we become more efficient or effective or, or um, reduce costs or things like that that we can highlight. Either you can identify as a need that something that we should be we should address, or bring to us and say this is something that has been done, um, and really calling that out. And that's a good tool for us to, to communicate um, at all times, but specifically when it comes time for the budget, um, say that <coughs> these efficiency this efficiency type work is, is happening. So if we can have insight into that, that would be helpful. Sounds good. Leon, whose goals are these? Um, these are the goals that we created. I remember, that, but are they the school board's goals or the superintendent's goals? It's really a combination of the both. Um, while we create those goals, we are looking to the superintendent to implement them and to make sure that they're being met within the district. Um, to Amy's point, he is that conduit into the schools. Um, so it's really just making sure that what we're looking for is being met. And to that point, with goal number one, how would we measure outside of the workshops you had mentioned quarterly, how else would we measure that we have hit this sort of a goal of the high visibility of engagement? I guess one of the things that I think that we could improve on is um, how we receive our feedback, um, <clears throat> specifically from staff at a, at a board level to assess that. One thing that we did last year, and I completely agree with everything that's been said about Sandy being the primary conduit, obviously, to the operations of the schools. But one thing we did last year that I thought was really valuable was the time we actually spent in the schools, mm -hmm. interacting with the teachers, interacting with the students, interacting with the administration. And I mean, if you want to think about visibility and engagement, I feel like that was such a valuable thing. My only kind of piece of improvement I would put on it is to have it be a little less curated. Um, I felt kind of a little bit like, um, I was a dignitary at the county fair judging judging pies or something you know I think it would be much um, much more organic if we were able to kind of go in and, and maybe even smaller groups actually interact with the teachers um, with a little less oversight I think that might make it a little bit freer it might help to engender some of that trust we're looking for um, I felt just in the one day I spent at the high school that I learned a lot and that I could see people's shoulders go down throughout the time that we were there kind of starting with that breakfast and then ending with that video where we were trying to educate our students about the importance of uh, staying off social media and we couldn't show the video because everyone was on Facebook. Um, I thought that was really ironic and amazing. Um, but I think the more, that we, the more we do of that and the more we kind of demystify the board as a unit and as individuals, I think the more kind of de more visibility we can get into our schools and the more accessible um, the board and the administration can feel to our teachers and students. I, I would agree with that, and that's actually, um, that's we just talked about that at curriculum. Mm -hmm. Right. Were you there? I was. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and one of the things we talked about was doing that again because we got like a lot of really positive feedback from especially teachers who were like, I've never seen a board member in the school, and like, um, mm -hmm. so I think some of, some of the, um, I, I think some of the curate, curated part of that was mm -hmm. to help people feel like we weren't there to like judge them or do you know so I think we do have to be careful with that but actually Monique had a really good idea she brought up in curriculum which was um, so if we did if we did something like this two times a year say instead of one time a year um, one of them could be like um, either like shadow a student mm -hmm. or shadow a teacher and the other one could be more of like the formal um, you know, kind of like small groups that go in and do tours. Um, we also talked about, at that meeting, we talked about, um, and it kind of, kind of organically morphed into that because everyone, everyone's schedule. So I know Sarah and April both kind of pitched in and made sure we had coverage of all the schools. But um, it's not necessarily something that just the curriculum committee yeah, should do. Yeah, that that's every, everybody should yeah, have definitely. that opportunity to go in and 
and see what, what's going on with these yeah. students. Yeah. And we had talked about that, that it, would, it could be something that the curriculum committee sets up and works right. with to, to get that going, but that it should be open to anyone who is available or wants to mm -hmm. join in those things. Because, I mean, I, feel like I even, love that. I feel like even just like sitting on a, in on a class, I mean, that kind of goes along with what you were saying, um, can show a lot that you want to be engaged in what students are learning. Yeah. So if we wanted to make that a smart goal, say like twice a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in, in relation to that, um, too, I, I, the finance committee, um, first time ever, actually went to the December sessions to within the schools when the schools are starting to talk about their needs. Oh, yes, I think true. that is another really wonderful way to build that communication and collaboration between staff and, and school board. Yep. It also goes a long way and I think it's just building that culture of trust and transparency that we value so much. Exactly. Another really important advantage of that, I think, is and I'm thinking about my experience at the high school. I walked into one classroom, and when I observed the instructor, I, you know, while in college mode here, the teacher, um, using technology so seamlessly in the way that they were working with the students, it was like touch the board and this is up, and then they're handing out papers, and next thing you know, they're zooming in on this. It was amazing to watch how effortless, effortlessly they moved through that technology. And the more that we can understand that, the better we can champion it come budget time when we talk about needing to spend money on certain things. And if we can have a passion about that through personally witnessing it, I think it makes it a lot easier to advocate for those dollars. And so there's just a lot of advantage to being able to have exposure to what's going on in the contemporary classroom. Great point, thank you. So Leanne, developing these action items that we can do as a board, does this address our kind of need to hit benchmarks? Yes. Okay. It absolutely does. Okay. Um, and it also provides us with, you know, something that we can use when we go to do an annual review, because then we can say, were these items facilitated? Were they achieved? Um, so it's both. It's, goal, it's our self-assessment on, on what we have done as well as what the superintendent has done on our behalf. So can I just clarify, like, if we're talking about the actual SMART goals, would you guys say that we came up with three just now? The quarterly um, workshop that staff participates in, the curriculum walks, and the finance committee heading... Or is that all part of one thing? Did you, I, think, I took it as four. Oh, one so. for Sandy, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. we had the. Yeah, we also had to measure the feedback from the staff. Okay. Um, having that ability for the staff to provide feedback directly to the board. Okay. But we don't have a measurable way to. Assess yeah, that I was right going to say, do we need yeah. to discuss how that's going to? Yeah, that's. Um, I think we do need to measure that one, and maybe it's a matter of. Um, the measurement may even be just creating that conduit or that the facilitation of having that mechanism for people to communicate with us where we have not really had that in the past mm -hmm. and that could be a goal. I mean, it's a good first step and then if we wanted to expand you know, with future goals, we absolutely could as far as measuring what is you know, satisfaction levels and all of that. Just a thought. Can you say that as a good, so it would be to establish a a mechanism for staff to engage directly with the school mm -hmm. board to provide feedback to the school board I don't know what everybody else thinks but I just want to like so we have an object a, uh, an objective with three goals and then within those goals are smart goals like I just want to make sure that we are creating a network that's manageable for yeah. like is this one year or not even one year well, it would be one school year, so it would be, we probably should have done this last month, well, um, yeah, but, but, you know, we'll have okay. 10 months to make it, so. Okay. It's not a small amount of work, but it's also not, um, it isn't, I, personally, I don't think it's anything that we could achieve. Um, I think the second objective that we'll probably spend the bulk of the time on, that's a beast unto itself. Um, and that one is not something I think we can address in a single year. That last objective about the addressing facilities and growth. 
Okay. So, so should these each have a time period mm -hmm. associated with them? Okay. Yes. And the ones that we've identified so far, we're saying that's like a school year yes. goal. Okay. Does that sound fair to you? Yeah, I just wonder if you need time to kind of clean it up and then push it back out to the board. Because mm -hmm. um, it could get a little tedious trying to do it all right now. But the, I don't yeah. want to tell you what to do. <laughs> but I just wonder if you need more time, two or three of you, to put it together. Unless you think you can do that here, then all the better. Oh. I know what that's like sometimes to try to wordsmith stuff. I guess the question would come into whether this is really more of a, is it a specific team? Do we set up a small subgroup to work through those refinements of the goals? Do we take it in policy? I guess that's really a board question. I mean, it sounds like we're in agreement on what the general goals are. It's just a matter of words. Right. Mm -hmm. right? I don't right. know that we need to over okay. committee. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can, can you we, want me to work with it? Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> the words, so. I mean, can we can we throw our our draft that we're we kind of created tonight up on a, a Google Doc mm -hmm. and just work with it? She's yes. yeah, I just started. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Sorry. just putting the general stuff. This is not like. Yeah. No, I appreciate I, that. I assume okay. somebody will go back through. Okay. Um, goal number two. Can I ask a quick, can I ask, yes. just ask a quick question about the, the first goal? Um, Sandy, I know that um, I believe that you're starting to, or you will be starting to, have those meetings with the SEA. Right. Um, and I and last last year it was a very unusual circumstance, and we were we were asked to be at those meetings, or they wouldn't happen, and we we honored that. Um, that's not going to be happening anymore because we're going to rely on you to to do those meetings and, and work on developing that relationship um, with just the said, SEA. When you say SEA, there's so many. We have a I'm question. sorry. The, the 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 educational association. The okay, because there's another SEA. Their month, their monthly right. meetings. Um, yeah. That yeah. They're yeah. Not, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> so. Um, I, I'm hopeful that, that, that you, that's going to be a place where you can really start to, to build that trust and culture that, that we really need moving forward. And um, so while you're here, you know, like we were all impressed with, with your ability to um, develop a culture, a really positive culture. So I, that's kind of part of this, you know, in terms of the relationships with the staff and how how they feel heard um, through through this process. Well, you, so um, I thought that that was valuable for the board, too, at the time, mm -hmm. um, although it was different circumstances. But I wouldn't want to preclude that necessarily as a method for us to sort of show our interest as a board, get information and feedback. Um, in terms of the tenants, obviously that's Sandy's, you know, meeting and his mm -hmm. realm. But I did think that at the time it was um, beneficial. Mm -hmm. What if we got sure. um, regular minutes from those sessions, and you know, if it got to a situation where there was not the collaboration occurring, that would be an at the moment opportunity to, you know, ask more probing questions as to where things are going. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we'll stay informed of what's happening without actually sitting at the table. You know what, I think, yes, um, the, the barrier that I view is that um, many of the mechanisms in which we attempt to gather information from the school level is filtered through the administration. And that works effectively when the administration is working effectively. Um, and I think that precluding that option or any other option that involves direct board um, involvement, um, and I'm not, you know, obviously talking about the current situation. I'm just talking in general. Things change tomorrow. Um, don't necessarily put us in a place where we have that sort of um, necessary information, I guess. And so that that's my concern about. Um, about that piece. Yeah. 
Any other thoughts on Goldwyn? I think we've uh, given ourselves a lot of work to do. We have. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody did that. Yeah, <laughs> no one can ever say we're bored. Um, goal number two is a big one. Um, it probably would have risen to goal one. Um, during the process of creating our goals, but really conducting an analysis of our budget process, the policies and protocols at all levels to identify areas of strengths and ideas for improvement. Um, this is already well underway, and congratulations to the Finance Committee for all the work that you guys have been doing independently and collaboratively with the Town Council. Um, seeing how further ahead we are already for next year's budget I, I think we're well underway with that. Um, I would hope that there'll be that, again, maintaining that critical view into how the policy or how the budget is pulled together, the numbers that are in place, um, how we're hitting some of those areas. I think fresh eyes is really important. So what are the deliverables on this? I think we just added time on that. And mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we have to, we as a group have to identify what we think is improvement. Right, and how do we assess right. whether that's happened or not? Right. Just throwing it out, I think the um, improved communication and collaboration with town council, if that continues, to me, you have met what the ultimate goal was. Um, last year, it may not have been one of our best collaborations as we went into first and second readings. Um, but what you're doing now to set that foundation is game changing. I think we may actually need to expand this because the way I read this, right. we've done it, right? We've conducted, we've conducted the analysis. We know what, are, what areas of strength there are. We know where the areas are improving. So check. I was gonna um, say we sandbag this one, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But the maybe the the next level of that is like actually implementing that change mm -hmm. um, and and carrying forward <laughs> the <laughs> the relationship. That's the hard part. Um, mm -hmm. That to me is like the the big measure of that. I, I guess um, that I think that um, I don't know that we've done anything remarkable actually in the, the macro level. I think that we've continued the work that's already been done. Um, I, I do think that we're, we're um, not necessarily involved in a lot of um, high depth analysis. I think that um, what I've seen is that that work is done by Kate justifiably, but I mean, you know, we don't necessarily, when I get, I get, you know, I'm sure we all do, a, a number of questions about the budget. I'm on the finance committee and I can't get a lot of those questions answered. And I don't think we probe for those questions. So I actually think that there's room for improvement for that. Um, How would you measure um, the probe piece? Or what would show that we had reached a level of success with that in order to measure it? I don't know. I think it's a valid point. I'm looking for how we can say that we've improved it. Well, I guess, too, I, can we clarify? Like, Leanne, you said, like, you had specific... You tied this goal specifically to, like, working with the town council, but that's not how I necessarily read it. I mean, I read that as a piece of it, it was but, a like, piece of it. I read it as like some of what Alicia said too, like what are our internal processes and have they been analyzed? I don't know because I'm not on finance, but is I, that all part of it? I think it's Just all to clarify. Part of it. It's all part of it. I really was addressing um, the fact that so much work has been done in the last few months where traditionally, or at least my first oh, year like on finance, on early side. we didn't even get started until January. Okay. Um, the fact that this started in June and July Right. We're we've six had, months ahead right. of we've the had a We've had a uh, committee level meeting to discuss our successes and reflect on what we wanted to keep from last year's budget process and what we wanted to get rid of or what we wanted to make changes to. So we've definitely done like some reflection on last year's process at a committee level. And then, like Leanne said, the second piece of that is always 
trying to collaborate with town council and make sure that we're on the same page. And that process is certainly happening sooner. Um, we've discussed budget goals at this point with the Joint Finance Committee, which we've never done um, this early in the year. And really just looking at, you know, in terms of our internal processes, I agree with Alicia that when it comes to the nitty gritty develop budget development process, the board does not have um, necessarily a role in that. And that's something that we could talk about. You know, if that's an area of, of improvement, that's certainly something we could talk about. Um, I would like to say I think it is an area that needs improvement. I think that the board has every right to understand what a line item number actually means yes. and where that money is going within whatever budget it might be from. And I, I see a lot of pushback about that. I see, um, oh, I see some resistance for whatever reason um, not wanting to give those details. And I think that that's, this, the budget is one of our biggest functions as a board. And we should be able to justify a line item by knowing the story within that line item. And I don't think that we have that information, and we should. Yes, I think those are fair points. I think how we, so in my view, and what I said by a check is like sort of, we know that those are gaps, so we've conducted that analysis, right? And so then the next step, in my view, is like how do we actually embed into the process whether it's through process or through policy, us being able to quick get access to that information quickly and timely um, and not have to jump through multiple loops. And then the other thing I think we need to do is actually embed it into our policy. There's a lot of policies out there that we need to change mm -hmm. to reflect what we view as, as a uh, sound process. Um, and that's something we haven't tackled yet. A lot of that is one of those measurable goals yeah. that we address these in policy. Um, I know that one of the big ones is the dates at which line. the timelines mm -hmm. that and impact fees. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if there's, I can't think of any other off the top of my head. So, may I ask a question? Sure. So, I agree with Sarah that that second bullet point it does seem right now like. For a lot of reasons, outside the nitty gritty, it's a little bit of a check mark the way it's written. I'm wondering if we should write, put something there, and I'm not going to get this right, but um, instead of conduct an analysis on the budget process, maybe it should say augment the budget process for the 2020-2021 year to reflect some of the areas of improvement highlighted in the 2019-2020 process. Perfect. Great. Can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't write that fast. Uh, augment. Yeah. The budget process for 2020-2021 to include some of the areas of improvement identified during the 2019-2020 process. I like that. Yeah, I like that yeah. too. That's awesome. I think, I mean, and I'm wondering, I, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't really even know what I'm saying because I'm not the finance person, but um, I feel like we have a, a really good handle on, you know, we do the, um, the budget workshop days and the leadership comes to, comes to us and they are really good at explaining and identifying specific either changes or asks for their budget, and I feel like we all get a really good understanding about that, and I'm wondering if that same process, maybe not with the administrators, but with Kate or somebody, can be expanded to just include more, like, so that we do have some of those line-by-line -line items that maybe um, we don't have as good, a under, uh, as good an understanding about. So can I just ask a clarifying question about the most recent joint finance? Yeah. Um, so you guys were able to get the, t the town council to agree to come to the two-day yes. budget of Palooza, whatever you want to call it, where they're kind of talking about the, every individual budget. And they're, they've agreed to 
attendance. Would the, will this be the first time that they've attended? It won't be the first time that any town councilor has attended. Um, but as part of like a formal kind of expectation, is it the first time that it's been? I think that's fair to say. Yeah. yeah. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. I think that, I mean, they might have shown up just out of curiosity yeah. so they wanted to, but I think that's major that, that that's going to be mm -hmm. perhaps part of our protocols moving forward because they're going to gain so much more depth of information by being at those sessions. Yep. Agreed. Okay, so did that one end up with two possible SMART goals? Can you read them back? I just have the address the budget process in policy and augment the budget process for 2021 to include areas of improvement identified in the 1920 <laughs> budget process. I have two more. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> to, <laughs> to, have, to have a role in the budget creation to understand the line items. So it sounds more, if okay. I understood Sarah correctly, it was to be more embedded in that process and not here. So is that not, it, is that not? Um, I would say maybe um, establish a process for, I mean, unless you can wordsmith this, it's your idea, but like establish a process for making sure that we have access to line item data. Is that fair? Yeah, I mean, however you want to write, write it, I guess. So is that not part of the including areas of improvement identified? It could fall under that umbrella. It could you, fall. Okay. I, I was just being more specific on it. It's just specific. It's, just, it's, just specific. Specific. it's a pretty yeah. specific okay. request. And the second one was yours, which was including more time in reviewing the actual line items. So we'd have somebody embedded more to create them, but we would have, as a board, um, additional time on top of what we're getting now to actually dig into those items. So could we combine those and say, like, identify the process to allow board members to have better understanding of line item budget, um, line, line items in the budget and more time to mm -hmm. assess those? Yeah, that? absolutely could combine that. Sorry. Thank you for taking these notes. Sure. Those nails getting in your way? They are. Yeah. Too long. Um, let me know when you're ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> Goal number three, um, supporting our team. Actually, before we move on, Sandy, is there anything you wanted to add to the budget one? No, I mean, I, I'm putting my hat on as a board member. I understand the need for line, line item understanding. Um, how we've been trained as superintendents, principals, is you got to be careful not to drill down too much because you, you, that could be your life. So you might just go into it knowing that you got to be patient because there's a lot of line items throughout the budget. So how much do you want to do? And you know, maybe it's a continuous over two years understanding. Um, okay. Because you can really get kind of like smothered yeah. in, yep. in that stuff. And I, I think that's good, but I think it's really good to see the big picture um, and, as well. Yeah, I like yeah. that it's a two-year goal. <coughs> and, and also, to kind of piggyback on that, you know, just trying to wrap my head around how, what that would even look like or how we would begin that process. You know, what we're really asking is for staff time to go through that with people from the Finance Committee, too. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a lot <coughs> of time. And so being mindful and figuring out like how we can bring those two things together where we can still be respectful of the staff time mm -hmm. so find a way to become incorporated in the process that's already occurring gotcha. if that makes sense no, that does yeah. I, I, I like really i don't think i don't think we can ask for additional processes yeah. from kate to necessarily go through right we have to be which right. is redundant for her and and I, and I appreciate that point, Sandy. I think you're right. I mean, that's a ton of work I mean, a in a, yeah. an area that's already like very intensive in terms of the workload. However, 
if there's an ask for a really specific and good reason, right. the board should have the information. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that has not necessarily been the experience in terms of getting that information as much as we might need to, because there's all kinds of questions that are piling up and needing to understand those situations are important. Okay. All right. Goal three. Supporting teachers and students in continuous improvement cycle. I, I get a lot of feedback about the teacher piece, and I think that we've made progress in that area. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The feedback about, and I had shared it with you, Sandy, that for the first time people had seen the superintendent in open houses. Thank you. That. I think that shows that there's support there. Um, the earlier goal about the board being more engaged and visible, I think, is also going to help show that. Um, my big question is how do we support our students in this process as well? Um, because they truly are the reason that we're here. Can, and can maybe that's to you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, wait, can I just. Before, I definitely want to hear from Kristen and Max because I feel like this is like super relevant to you guys, but can we um, be really clear about what we mean when we say yes, the prison yes. improvement yes. cycle? Because yeah. I feel like it's kind of vague and I just jarring. want everybody to be on the same, <laughs> yeah, it is jarring. I just want everyone to be on the same page about what we're, oh. what we mean when we say that because. Oh, sorry about that. I live this, so I assume everybody lives it right along with me. Um, basically, with a continuous improvement, when you find an area that you can improve upon you do that and you don't just walk away you stay and you make sure did that improve again is there other areas that now that we've made one part better did we expose something else that needs to be fixed along with it and it's just really continuing to make sure that so I use all the words again um, that you're staying embedded in the process to make sure that it's constantly getting better each and every time is there a way that that process is measured typically um, in my world yes it's done all on metrics um, because it's you're changing how somebody is doing their work so I can get some I can get something through a credit process faster and I can measure that if it took 10 days and I got it down to two I did really well um, I don't know how to measure that when it comes to this Depends on what we're improving, I think. Correct. <laughs> right. And I think it would be really specific to that. Yeah. Um, you know, we saw where we landed, you know, in the school rankings. It makes you think we're doing something really well. And is it just a matter of continuing that to ensure that we stay at or above those levels? Um, How about I've looking at giving students more opportunities um, for learning. Mm -hmm. The new classes. Like new classes. classes. Yeah. Yeah. The Career Pathways yeah. program, program is a perfect example of that. I mean, we're going to hear Internships. about the cool, the cool uh, nutrition, mm -hmm. like the, the cooking that the kids are doing uh, when the nutrition presentation happens. That's that's a measurable improvement within our so We're looking at um, SMCC for kids to be able to take classes through SMCC at our high school. In the culinary arts? No, or in no. Yeah. other okay. subjects. I feel like Monique would really have a lot of guidance in terms of, of how we can do that. I mean, I, I think of the new I, I think the Ready. I Ready program that's, have they, I mean, it's, it's happening soon or it's in already process happened. already it's in happened. process. Um, I mean, those are mechanisms that they use to measure our student progress. I think that from my perspective, we're missing the end user information and feedback. I mean, what's relevant to teachers and students? What, mm -hmm. what do they need to be successful? What do they want? What are they missing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I definitely feel like with adding new classes and giving students more opportunities, that shows that we care. We want everyone to be able to find their own niche and explore their own interests. Um, but also, I guess kind of with the first goal, just like being there. And I think 
for students seeing like a superintendent and board members in the hallways and in classes. I mean, I know that shows that they're here, they're interested in what we're doing, and like they're working for us. So I think that makes if you have an idea, if you had an idea tomorrow, like something that would really help your educational programming or a barrier, something that is really a concern to you in, in accessing your education, do you, would you know how to present that to somebody to make a meaningful change? <coughs> do you mean like someone to like tell them that I had a problem or? Yeah, more of like a system level problem though, you know, a higher uh -huh. level problem. Or if you had, um, if you saw sort of a, a, a repeated concern in your classes or something, mm -hmm. what, I mean, is there a mechanism that you could easily seek out to try to get that? information available to the board or to the to the superintendent would you would you know what to do with that I mean I think with my position it's easy to access you all. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair but, yeah but I know with other students like I feel like they're not as involved and might not be as educated in like what goes on with how the school runs um, I feel like there could be ways to like like <laughs> make transparency better for people. It's just hard because you don't know like right now I feel like students they have to go out and do their own research to learn about who their board members are, like who their superintendent is, all that stuff. Um, I mean the information's there for them, but it's kind of like they have to take you know what I'm trying to say. Kristen, <laughs> do you do you feel that the average student in your school would know who to go to in that school and would feel like there's a process for them to be able to communicate an idea or a concern that you might have? Do you no, think people would I don't that? think so. I is don't, is I that think. on them or because there's not a, it's not communicated on how to do that? I feel like it's a little bit of both, but I definitely <clears throat> feel like there could be ways to make it more clear. Mm -hmm. um, I think students have legitimate concerns. They just don't know, like when given the chance to share them, they don't, or they don't know how to share them. They just don't know like who to go to, mm -hmm. which I think is an issue. Yeah. It's, it's like the most important part of the continuous improvement cycle is having a, an established conduit to challenge the status quo. Mm -hmm. That's what this comes down to. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, do students and do teachers have a way to say, and I work in education too, so I hear it all the time. I hear, well, that's how we've always done it. Yeah. We've always done it that way. You know, Helen's always done this. And then she, okay, so the question is, how can we, or what's the structure that we can give you and give our teachers to say, I know that's how we've always done it, but what if we could identify an opportunity to change that and then plan a way to change it and then execute that change and then measure it afterward? That's the actual cycle. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is, and maybe one of our goals, is to establish in each of our schools uh, a real process and a structure to allow our students and our teachers to be able to feel like they have a, a solid channel to challenge the status quo, because that's what yeah. this is all about. I agree. I agree with that. Channel to drive change. Yeah. We need like the um, presidential phone. <laughs> the red, the red phone that calls Moscow. That actually is. <laughs> wow. That was a throwback from like the eighties. I didn't mean currently. That was appropriate today. I know. I didn't think it things haven't Far changed. Um, actually, that last one is to me the target. That it's that, mm -hmm. it's everything. It's specific. It's measurable. It's. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, like yeah. I do. My too. guess is if we asked the principals, they would say yes. This is what they should do. But the fact that you guys don't know it right. is a yeah. problem, yeah. right? Yeah. So maybe that exists. Maybe we need to create it. But either way, it needs to be communicated. Yeah. Okay. Do do we survey our seniors when they graduate? I know, I know I a lot of schools do. do. I think they started doing that. We were trying to... I know, like, maybe they do for, like, where they're going and, you know, those kinds of things, but 
do we I do a, seen the a comprehensive survey about their K through 12 experience? I don't know. If the top Are their dollars very valuable? Yeah. And not even at the end of like, like their senior year. I think at, at the, the end, end of, of each year. like school, like phase, even yeah. like, even yes. school year or phase uh -huh. level, like to yeah. like really evaluate what their important. experience was like would be yeah. really valuable. Oh, that would be, be interesting. interesting. The last objective and the last goal. I was going to say this is again already underway, um, but establishing a plan to address facilities and growth, specifically at our K2 level, with a goal of supporting a committee to assess facility needs that address the student growth. Well, I mean, I feel like this really is underway. Mm -hmm. So probably make it a bit more. I mean, it's hard, it's kind of like we'd make a smart goal. Like that we sort of already like when you make a to do list and you can and you, already check it yes, out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sure there's more. Committee. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. there's more to do, but I do feel like like you know, like you guys had the meeting last night. Like we're on the way to a, to doing a lot of this already. And I'm not saying there isn't more to do, but I oh, don't want to. I don't want right. to discount that we've already done a lot of this in this. You, and perhaps the goal really is a matter of asking the administration to provide that support. So, you know, Sandy, were you even mentioning, you know, have we looked at it going this route or have we engaged with architects? Those sorts of um, steps along the way. Yeah. You've been through the process. None of us have built a building yet. Right. Um, I think if you can help keep us on that track and especially on a track towards success, um, to me that, that covers it. Because we know what we know, but there's a lot of things we probably don't know. And we don't know we don't know them. We don't, we don't know what we don't know? Yes. We need to put a time frame on this, I yeah. think. Because um, it can't, like, we will have made progress by mm -hmm. such and such date, but if uh, we can't stop moving, if something were to happen, right. we're going to have to keep progressing. So, well, right. And we talked at the last meeting, I think, about our goal being a November 2020 ballot question. Mm -hmm. And if we don't meet that goal, then June um, 21, right? Mm -hmm. I think it would be safe to say just on the ballot, in 20, <clears throat> but by 2021, the latest. Yeah. So keeps no us on the But that's, that guides our timeline mm -hmm. moving you know, um, before. You know, like that's the end point. Absolutely. Then. What, what are those other things that we have to do along that timeline to that end point? Mm -hmm. um, to that, again, coming from a continuous improvement, having a date and trying to force that date, um, super important. But if we found out in five months that we had missed a critical step along the way, I would hope that we could have that brakes on, adjust, and look at making sure that when we do go, that we are as buttoned up as possible um, and being able to accept that we may not hit a marked date of that June, but you know that means that we captured what we needed to in order to be successful. Well, and, oh, go ahead. Um, I, well, and mine is on a, sort of a different topic. If you I just I look at I look at our goal like support a committee to assess facility needs that address student growth. I think they're going to be doing a lot of that planning and collaboration with with Sandy and mm -hmm. Todd and the board. And so what we can do is once this committee is up and running, it will be happening soon. Make sure that we provide that committee with clear, mm -hmm. concrete guidelines and expectations and then provide that support. So so my point was going to be, I mean, about regarding the growth specifically, and I wanted to bring you back to last night. You've got a question about the growth mm -hmm. data, and that, that data ranges to what date? It goes out 10 years. It goes to, the, I think the school year is 2028, 2029. So, um, not knowing a lot about growth, do you know what the um, recommended time frame that we should be seeking that data on growth? I mean, I guess my concern, I thought that that person last night 
raised a good point. Your data is only until 2028. 20, what happens after? Is it, are we going to be looking at um, a, a change of tide? Is it, is it going to be more? And so I, I'm, I'd like to inquire a little bit about more long-term growth and mm -hmm. are we looking at our needs in that long-term perspective? Yeah, we might need to do a refresh of that. Well, so what I, what I wrote down as, uh, what are we calling them if they're under a goal? Smart, smart. smart goal. Uh, would be to review the enrollment study on like a, you know, regular, semi-regular basis, whether we commit to doing it in December or you know, after elections when people have had time to set up back <coughs> into new roles because we're on committees now, but we're not necessarily going to be on all these same committees. Mm -hmm. And so I think given the ginormous nature of this topic, it would be good for the whole board to review that enrollment study, yeah. you know, periodically and set some expectations that we're that we all have an understanding and that we're looking at that enrollment study and comparing it to what we actually have now. And I know that, you know, we've always had the superintendent do an enrollment update, but if you're not looking at the at the full study or you're not thinking about it in terms of the full study, sometimes those numbers just they say, oh, plus two, plus four, okay. Click it along. So are you guys suggesting to like uh, re or like refresh the study every however many years? I mean, I know it was a tremendous or amount of work, so I don't know it. what the feasibility of having Rebecca re-engage, like, I don't know where the value tipping right. point is, if that makes sense, for when these numbers become, you know, not necessarily relevant. If our building project is five years out, like, what do we need to do to make sure that the numbers stay relevant? But I don't think it's something she needs to do every year. I mean, mm -hmm. that's... I think the previous study was 2016, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I think so. So I think it was it was basically two and a half, three years old when they decided to redo it. So I think that they've they've set a precedent of keeping it up to date, you know, going through it every every three years or so. And actually, the reason that they redid it, if I'm remembering whatever presentation that came from, was because we were starting we to started accelerate started beyond it. Yeah. And actually, it was starting to fail yeah. us in underestimating yeah. our enrollment growth. And so the board at that time chose to re-engage yes. and refresh it because With we were exceeding terms. our projected growth. Well, the right. fact that they've only done 10 years makes me wonder if that's all that they can use to predict. But is there a more long-term data think, frame that, I, that we can use? So in my experience working in kind of educational statistics, I think going beyond 10 years is challenging, particularly in a town like Scarborough, because we're on the precipice of some very unique growth for this town, a growth we haven't seen before. So trying to predict how that's going to impact is is a real challenge. And what I answered last night was I answered and said, you know, we, we have the enrollment study, which is a great basis. But one of the things we have to think about with this school is that this isn't just about how what we have now is going to grow. It's how is some of the unique development we have in town going to add? How are the additional services that are on, on, the, that are on our doorstep? Which we can actually say this now, and I was always resistant to say it because people would talk about pre-K is coming, and I would say, well, we don't know that yet, but I think now we do. There's a lot of legislation that's come out in the last year that's, that tells us this is going to come probably in the not too distant future. Um, and so we have pre-K to think about. We also have some uh, crowding and some of our other phase levels that could be accommodated through the school. So we may have the, the uh, migrating down to another grade level into this earliest phase. So if we think about the complications of that, in addition to the enrollment growth we have forecast over the next 10 years, uh, it actually complicates the story beyond what any statistical model can show you. So I think it's really important that we continue to look at this every few years, um, particularly if we start exceeding our growth again, mm -hmm. uh, like we did last time. Um, and I think that's a, a that's something the board has already put in motion. I, I fully support continuing it moving forward. Every three years or so, refreshing this, particularly if we're observing that our growth is exceeding our projections, which I think it, I think it will. That's my prediction. I think it will. Anything additional? One of the ideas I had for this goal was just to kind of do what we did in that second bullet, which is to freshen it up a little bit. So I was over here kind of trying to wordsmith a little bit, and I was thinking, rather than what it says now, which, again, I feel like we have a little bit of a check mark there, um, it could be something like support a steering committee that will solidify the charge 
to address our student growth through facilities needs by early 2020. And that's a little ugly because I just wrote it like in chicken scratch, but that puts a time on it. And I think that's, that's our first big hurdle is solidifying that charge. I think what we've decided is that we're hoping to see that in the early part of the new year. Um, and then from there, it's looking forward to the ballot. So I feel like every time we go through these goals, if we can make it very specific and very relevant to the next step, it keeps it measurable, it keeps it attainable. That's a couple of those letters, right? That's the M and the A. So, um, you know, so I, I think that that's, that's an important thing to do. That's great. Did we just end the meeting early? We did. Um, yeah. um, I know this was a big topic to address. Um, I'm glad that we got it done. I'm really glad with where we landed as far as measuring this. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. We've got a quick break and then back out. Should we break this down? Oh, yes. I think we probably should.